Gorilla, nature. Bro, let's go skate. Dude, E equals MC squared. Nerd for life. Hello you guys, Pastor Darius here again. I am so excited to be here. It is a blessed day. I'm here at the Gorilla Nature Inc. headquarters and this is another Jesus Life Church International Ministry Sermon. Here it goes. Today's message, we're gonna be talking about the cost, the cost of success. Success is a very, very difficult thing to achieve, whether it be monetary or whether it be in a relationship, whatever success that you're looking for, it is not going to come easy. Success is a lonely road at times. And I've, I had to learn this on my own. I had to learn that, uh, th that success is a lonely road because the more successful that I've become in when I, well, you know, when I started advancing in my education, you know, um, when I started taking my education seriously, there were a lot of friends who I was not able to continue communicating with because my relationship with those people had reached its end. It had, it was, if I continued to have a relationship with those people, it was going to be detrimental to where I wanted to go with my life where my life was taking me so there are sometimes right sometimes you're gonna have to lose friends honest truth I hate to say it but it's a fact there are some people who you grew up with that it, the relationship with that person was good when you were younger but when you were a child you did childish things but as you became an adult you had to put away childish things right so you know I want to start uh, you know there are unhealthy relationships everywhere our job is to filter out the bad relationships right and you know so that we can make room for good relationships if you have somebody who is constantly you know maybe you have a friend who you, you know when you guys were younger you guys did bad things together you know all the time you know you guys got in trouble together right you know you went out with that person hung out you know maybe you guys went to parties and clubs and you know you bet your first time you started drinking it was with that person you know maybe if you you smoked or something like that you did it with that person right and you guys influenced each other to be to, to be silly right everybody has that friend right and and as you get older, and if let's say you're like me and you want to have a family, there's a point where you're going to have to start making a decision for your future, right? The, where you want your future to be or what you want your future to be like. And, you know, and then you're going to have to, you have to make some sacrifices. Sacrifice is inevitable, 100%. In life, there are going to be sacrifices. So I want to tell you guys about a story. I had a buddy and the, every time like you know this guy uh, I think uh, we were really good friends up until the age of about 15 years old and I remember when I, I knew that our relationship my relationship with this person we were good friends uh, but I, I remember when I knew our relationship was reaching its end and when it was was when there pretty much there was a situation when this guy he started stealing from me literally he started stealing from me he took my shoes he took one of my he took my cell phone and i remember i went to the cell phone company and you know because my cell phone was lost and you know i was like hey you know i wanted to report that my cell phone had been lost you know and i needed to you know get a new cell phone and they're like oh yeah the phone that you had is registered to a new number and i was like wait my phone is registered to a new number and i was like yeah go ahead give me that number because you know every phone has has a it has a number there's a number in every phone that you buy it has like there each phone has like a digital footprint you know so 
They gave me the number, I called the number, and sure enough, guess who it was? I, I, the person didn't pick up, but it went to voicemail. It was my buddy. <laughs> it was the guy who I considered to be one of my good friends. Sure enough, he took my phone. And I mean, it was, it hurt me bad when, you know, I found out about the shoes. It hurt me bad when I found out about the phone. Um, but you know, like I said, there are good relationships and there are, are bad relationships, right? And it just happened to be, he was not meant to be in my future. So I finally made a decision and I had to I had to end my relationship with that person. It was very difficult, but I knew that if I kept this person in my life, it would be detrimental to who I wanted to become. There would be people who would not be able to come into my life because of me keeping this person in my life. So I want to talk about, um, you know, sometimes life can be tough. Life can be tough. That's just the facts. Um, so what I want to talk about now, I want to go ahead and read um, a scripture to you guys. I want to read from Job chapter one. And you know, if you guys know me, I like to read the whole chapter. So we're going to go through and we're going to read the whole chapter, right? In the land of Oz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the east his son used used to hold feasts and uh, his sons used to hold feasts and their homes on their uh, uh, in their homes on their birthdays and they would invite their three sisters to eat drink and, and uh, eat and drink with them when a period of feast uh, had had run its course, Job, uh, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. One day the angels came to, came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan. And Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does, does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, have you not Put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has you have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land but now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face for the Lord said to Satan very the Lord said to Satan, very well then, everything he has in you is in your power, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord one day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest, at the oldest brother's house, a message came to Job and said, the a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby and the, the Sabians attacked and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword and I am the only one who, who has escaped to tell you while he was still speaking another messenger came and said the fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the serve and the servants and I I am the only one who has who has escaped to tell you. While while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, "The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down your and swept down on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who ha, who has escaped to tell you." While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, "Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house when suddenly a 
mighty wind swept in from, in from the from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them and they are dead. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. At, the, at, at this, Job got up, tore his robe, shaved his head, then, then he fell to the ground in worship and said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be pleased, be praised. In all, in all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Now, I always look at the story of Job, right? I, I, I love the story of Job. Now, before, I, it, used to, it used to make me cringe. I used to look at the story of Job and I'll be like, oh my gosh. Why did so many terrible things happen to Job? Even God said, look at my servant Job. He, he said he was perfect. He was a righteous man. He was a good man. Why did the bad things happen to Job? Right? See, this is the crazy part. The bad things didn't happen to Job. They happened to the things around Job. Clearly, God said that, that, the, that, that Satan could attack everything, but he could not touch Job. He could not touch Job. Now, this is the crazy part, right? Job's children did not serve God in the way that Job did. And, you know, we all need to learn to have focus, right? When we're talking about success, right? We all need to have focus, right? Um, I'm going to come back to the Job story, but I want to go keep moving forward. You know, it is impossible when you are being pulled in 10 different directions, right? To be successful. It is impossible to, to have focus on whatever it is that you're trying to develop when you are being pulled up in so many different di directions, right? Examples would be your family members are inviting you to events every week, right? Burn birthday parties, baby showers, movie nights, holiday celebrations. You need to have boundaries. When you go spend time with your family and friends, set a time limit. If you're gonna go, go for an hour, go for two hours, set a time limit and get back to what you gotta take care of. Get back to your life. Keep focused, people. Do not lose your focus, right? I want to. I like to listen to the Secret of Success podcast featuring Eric Thomas. I'm sure if uh, if you're listening to this, you probably have heard of Eric Thomas, right? Pastor Eric Thomas, right? Um, you know, hip, Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher. And one of the quotes that I heard inside is, it said, "He, uh, um, Eric Thomas has said, it takes ten thousand hours to master your craft. You need to become a master of your craft if you want to be truly successful. You need to it literally." 10,000 hours when you go to grad school right you're gonna that's when you are going to become a get your masters right you're probably gonna have to put close to 10,000 hours into studying whatever it is so that you can for perfect your craft if you want to be a doc get a doctorate you're gonna have to put in the time literally 10,000 hours whatever it is you need to put about 10,000 hours before you can call yourself a master at something if you want to be the best person shooting film you're gonna have to spend 10,000 hours studying, learning, devoting your time to the process so that you can have the success that you're looking for. Um, I, I was reading a book. I like to read. And there's a book I was reading. It's called The Business Secrets from the Bible. Highly suggest you go check this out. Again, Business Secrets from the Bible. It's called, uh, it, it's a uh, Business Secrets from the Bible, Spiritual Success Strategies for Financial Abundance. And it's by Rabbi Daniel Lapin. Lapin. I'm not sure exactly how to say the name. But, um, you know, in the, in the, in the book, he had a quote. He said, if I pay my incredible, if I pay my incredibly competent mechanic to maintain my BMW automobile. And if I pay the, the ambitious youngster down the block to mow my lawn, I thereby purchase valuable hours in which to practice and perfect my own craft or trade. Each of us accomplishes our task for more quickly uh, far more quickly than we could do individually because we have acquired proficiency at our particular task and are able to apply efficiency by not spread, uh, spreading ourselves thin. It takes a village to... Hey, listen to what I just said. 
Listen to all of that. All the different people, uh, 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 Eric, E.T., the hip hop preacher, right? He said it, right? 10,000 hours. You know, Rabbi Daniel Levin, he said it. You have to put the time in. You need to focus. The cost of success is sacrifice. Sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice friendships. You're going to have to sacrifice time. You're going to have to sacrifice time with the people that you love, your family members. Whatever it is that you're doing in life, sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice. I want you guys to know that it takes a village to make a society run sex successfully. Listen, it takes a village to make a society run sex successfully. When we look back at the story of Job, Job lost his family and he, he was hurt bad. He lost everything. Everything he had worked hard to have, it was all taken from him. But he put God first. And we all need to do that. You need to do that. Listen to me now. In the Bible, I remember that one of the disciples, some, there was a, a gentleman who came to God, uh, came to Jesus. They said, which are the most, most important laws to fo follow? And one of the most important laws to follow was put God first. Love thy neighbor as thyself. These were the two he said the most important. Put God above all else. God above all else. If God takes, if God takes away your car, you need to praise God. If God takes away the relationship that you have been working on for so long, you need to praise God. The cost of success is sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed everything for us so that we could have an opportunity at a quality life. Now it's time for you to pick up your cross and sacrifice for God. And I tell you now, if you sacrifice for God, there is nothing that God won't do for you. If you keep reading the story of Job, if you keep reading the story of Job, initially everything that, he, that Job lost, he received back and it was multiplied. This is what God will do for you. The process, when you're going through the process of success, of, of trying to achieve success, sometimes it's going to be agonizing. It's going to hurt. You're going to want to quit. You're going to want to give up when the, 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 the athlete who likes to go and lift heavy weights, who, who runs, who wants to be the football player, who wants to be a professional football player, he has to sacrifice time. You're going to have to sacrifice time. The violinist who wants to join and go to Juilliard, who wants to be, who wants to play in one of the top world orchestras, they have to sacrifice. They have to spend hours upon hours upon hours to perfect their craft. Craft. Perfect your craft, people. This is Pastor Darius saying, God bless. Hope you guys enjoy this. Please go check us out. Follow us at Jesus Life International, uh, Jesus Life Church International on Instagram. Also go follow us at our main page, Gorilla Nature Inc. On Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can on Twitter, it's Gorilla Nature 77. Uh, you know, please go check out our website at GorillaNatureInc.com. Thank you guys so much. God bless. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Catch you guys next time. Pastor Darius and have a good day. Thank you guys. Love you.